Yeah, very unfortunate, but hey, life is like that. What we can do. Okay, so I guess we can start. It's seven. At least I put it in my watch. So, um, I mean, we, we did something highly unusual the other day, right? We, we, we kind of decided not to continue off with class, but we, we had some sort of practical session where we, um, we worked through a series of, of very basic trivia, actually, very trivial arithmetic expressions. Um, specifically, we we're trying to get a better sense of of how it would perform, how it would go about performing complex, so-called complex arithmetic expressions or mathematical expressions, right? So basic addition and, and, and really subtraction and, and um, oh, things of that nature. This is weird, yeah. So just, uh, I guess, before we proceed, I'm sorry about that. Not properly orchestrated today. Uh, just a few announcements here, right? Uh, before we start, sorry, went ahead of myself here. So, take home quiz number 16 will be available today by 23.59 on the <coughs> Moodle, um, so you know the drill. Um, the due date is, uh, is Monday, 23.59. Um, you probably already realize that uh, we, we are slowly cre creeping closer to the time when we write the final theory, theory test, which is class theory test number four. It's, we are likely going to write it on the 4th of October, um, but depending on, on, on how things go, we'll probably write it the following week, which is the 11th, so just take note. Um, this is just like less than a month right from now, so uh, you want to already start thinking about this. And it's going to cover what we've done uh, uh, by way of the MIPS um, instruction set architecture, including the data path, which we hopefully start next week. <coughs> so brace yourselves. This thing, right? I'm concerned for the language minors. I, I keep, every time I bump into the class reps, I keep asking them about this. They're, they're not very clear about whether or not they actually went to the assistant registrar to have this changed. If you're a language minor, you want to avoid a sort of situation where you're going to sit in this venue, right, demographic lecture theater, for more than six hours with no contact with the outside world. You won't be allowed to use your mobile devices, nothing, right? Because you need to be quarantined. So, I mean, if I were you, I'd, I'd sort this. This is draft number two and it hasn't yet been changed. I mentioned this uh, when draft number one came out, but uh, people don't seem concerned here. Good luck with that. Okay, uh, so like, like I was saying, uh, um, I was saying that we, we, we did something highly unusual the day before yesterday where we just looked at uh, a whole bunch of very basic uh, expressions, right? And I, th I think I'm glad we did it because it turned out that I had, I had high expectations. I thought people were already you know, able to do most of these things, right? But when we were working through the problems, it turned out that uh, it was the complete opposite, actually. People were you know, um, struggling with basic things like uh, you know, just how to write the program, how to go about writing the program. So we, we ended up, sadly, I mean, we spent almost two hours in here, but we, we only did uh, the first one and the second one. Hopefully people had a chance to revise these things uh, when they went back home, especially that I left you in the lab. Okay. So we are going to double back and finish off um, the discussion we had started on so-called system calls. Right, we want to wrap up with, with this particular lecture series so to transition to, to lecture series number three, um, MIPS instruction set three, sorry. So we, we said that, uh, um, I mean, if, if you remember our discussion of, of operating systems, so-called operating systems, we mentioned that, that in fact, um, one of the things that an operating system does is it provides end users a sort of interface that facilitates interaction, right, with the computer system itself. Um, so it so happens that MIPS uh, <coughs> provides this, this, this so-called interface uh, by way of uh, so-called system calls. 
right? So the system calls will provide you through QTSP or MIPS, will provide you with uh, mechanisms to do fancy things like enable a user to um, enter a string or something, or enter a character, um, or provide you with a service or an interface that enables you to print a string, print a character, um, to be able to print an integer, print a float, print a double, right? Um, and also, more importantly, there's something that we've been neglecting. Sometimes we've managed to sneak, in, sneak it into some, some of the examples we've been showcasing in class. This whole notion of properly terminating um, the program once you finish writing it, right? Specifically, um, making use of uh, system call code number 10. Right, um, so that you avoid that funny error that points to, I think, uh, is it the uh, address associated with the program count or something? Program works, but you, uh, you have to, every time you run the program, you have to say okay or abort the program uh, for you to actually see the results, uh, or see the CPU state change within QTSPM, right? So system calls. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing about these so-called system calls is uh, <clears throat> Depending on what sort of service you wish um, to gain access to, there's a predefined uh, there, there are a predefined series of steps that you have to follow, right? And so we'll just have a brief discussion about this, and just look at some some few examples so that people understand what we're talking about. Um, but everything has one thing in common, right? Two things, I guess. First is that uh, you specify the you specify this you you dictate or specify the service you're interested in by um, <clears throat> indicating the system call code. This is already available in the manual, reference manual, right? And you specify that by putting or loading that particular system call code value, which is an integer, into the register V0, right? So V0 is one of the 31 general purpose registers. Uh, once you do that, um, depending on the type of service, obviously there's probably a couple of intermediate steps that you'd have to perform. Um, but as the last step, what you have to do is you just issue the instruction syscall, short for system call, right? S Y S call, C O R C A double L, right? Syscall, and then done. And what's happening behind the scenes here is uh, every time the assembler sees uh, the instruction syscall, uh, which is part of the syntax for MIPS. Well, every time it sees Cisco, it expects to find a value in the register V0. Once it checks what value is in V0, it may or may not expect you to have specified intermediate steps in between you loading the value into V0 and issuing the Cisco uh, operation. Right, so just a, a few examples of some um, Cisco's or Cis, Cis, some, some services that we're going to gain access to here is. Uh, I just want to see how to uh, how we go about printing an integer. Did we we did we did this right? Those of us that remained behind the other time, but we we said because they had gone for class, we said we'll do this again. So this is why we're doing this again, I guess. Uh, so some examples of uh, so-called system calls here is a service for you to print an integer because currently there's there's really no way there's no easy way of printing the integer right for us to once we perform our computation, for us to see the result of the computation, we literally have to check for the result in uh, registers that we, we're using to write uh, or to load values into, right? Um, so the system, the service print integer, which is associated with system core code, uh, number one, allows you to print an integer value, right? So if you're adding two and two, and you know the answer is four, typically what you do is you load maybe uh, or let's say it's adding two and three, you load two into a register maybe eight, you load three into register nine, and then you, you, you use the, the, the operation uh, add uh, to, to put the result of what is in eight and what is in nine into 10, right? So add dollar sign 10, comma, dollar sign eight, comma, dollar sign nine, right? Um, for you to print what is in, uh, what we're saying is, for you to print what is in register 10, instead of you checking the value of register 10, for you to print it onto the console, what you do is you issue system core code number one. So you, you say uh, load the value, load immediate, for instance, uh, 
uh, dollar sign V0, uh, 1, and then um, uh, you would say uh, move, uh, you know, look at an example. You move the value that is in, uh, uh, in, in register 10, the result, into, um, into the argument which is register A0, um, and then you issue Cisco. At which point, um, you'll be able to print the value of uh, the value of two plus three, which is five. So you will see two plus three on the console, right? And we mentioned that in Qt Spim, the console represents like it, because it's a simulator. But if it was a it was an actual computer, it would be like your screen. So you are printing the result so that uh, you see the result onto the screen rather than going to the register to see the result. Right. Uh, the same thing happens with uh, print string for you to print a string. Right. So it, it so happens that uh, you use different services. Why? Because um, because of the way this information is actually stored in memory. Right. And integers typically could be just half a word or maybe a word. Right. But a string, on the other hand, is composed of a stream of bytes multiple characters, right? Typically, like your character would, would be, what's the length of the character? Who knows, don't know. One byte, eight bits. So um, for you to be able to print a string, you use a uh, uh, system call code number four. We'll look at examples here. Um, again, you specify the string that you want to print by indicating the register of that string. So the Location in memory where the string is sitting, you slot that particular location or the beginning of that register into the um, register, zero purpose register, A0. I don't know what the register number for A0 is, but I guess people know here. Uh, like I said last time, in my case, I find it a lot easier to, um, to use the mnemonics rather than say, oh, A0 is, uh, oh, register, register number four and number five. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about here. So A0 is just register number four. V0 is just register number two here. It's one and the same thing. They're all general purpose registers. Yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously, I mean, if you're interested in printing an integer, you might be interested in, in, in actually eliciting input from a user, right? If, if, uh, if you're dealing with an interactive program, for instance, the question is um, how, how exactly do you get input from a user, right? Typically, your, your applications would be like uh, interactive in nature, right? It's simple applications here, but yeah, interactivity by way of like clicking some graphical user interface where you type in some value into a form, right? That's what we're talking about. And behind the scenes, actually, that's how forms work, right? Interacting with OS ultimately. But we're saying for you to, to facilitate that interaction in Qt Spim, for instance, or in MIPS, um, when you're dealing with integers, you use system core code number five, right? So um, if you use it appropriately, what will happen is uh, the console sort of like start blinking, right? Um, signaling the fact that it's expecting input from a user, right? So a user will enter an input, like in this case, it would be an integer, maybe 2019, right? And then uh, once you get that integer, you're able to do interesting things, right? Like uh, use that particular value that the user has entered into some computations that are part of your program. <clears throat> I, was, I was joking around the other time when I was asking if, if people would be able to write a program that allows a user to specify the date of birth, right? The date of birth is the year 2005 or something. Um, how do we know your age? We know that we'd have to subtract your age from the current year, which is 2019. Logically, it's a simple thing to do, right? So you notice, uh, looking at what we've done so far, but the thing here is, uh, how do you get that value from a user? System call code number five, right? So same drill, you slot the value five into uh, register V0, uh, and then you just issue syscall. And then once you issue this call, uh, the user will type in the integer, and then you have access to the integers. Interesting enough, the integer is going to be in V0, actually, in this case. Once the user enters the, integer, uh, the value, it goes into V0. Show sure, us examples here. Uh, a listing input, uh, a string input, though, is slightly different, because, again, the way that uh, these different data types are stored here. 
so you do two things. You first of all pre-allocate memory. Yes. Yeah, well, so I deliberately did that because, uh, listen, I mean, we can do that. That would be nice. It's, uh, I think there's a total of about 12, 12 uh, system calls that you have access to in MIPS. We said our, our interest in all of this is integers, if you remember. Some of these things we're just throwing in so that we try and understand. I mean, we left out doubles, but it's the same drill. And in fact, if we had decided to include doubles here, we might as, as well have started dealing with what? With uh, coprocessor one in, 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 in QT spin, which I said we're going to ignore, right? Do you remember what I said? I said, I said there's a way in which you work with 14 point numbers, decimal numbers, right? You don't use the normal general purpose registers we've been using. These are integer registers. Int, regs, right? Yes. Floating point registers are the ones you use. So we're ignoring these things here, ignoring them because uh, we left out our discussion of uh, floating point numbers. So that's why they are skipped. But again, uh, I do encourage you guys to, uh, to go through the reference documentation. Um, which you have access to, and read widely if you're interested in seeing how floating point uh, values and how doubles can actually be um, be used, right? floats and doubles. Okay. Right. So again, I was saying you need to pre-allocate memory, and you also specify the number of characters, the maximum number of characters that you expect the user to to input. So for instance, if you, if you were to write like uh, the exercise we had the day before yesterday in class, if you were wanting to get input from, let's say a student, uh, their name, right? First name and last name. What you'd have to do is, you're writing a program that accepts uh, the student name. And then it says, good morning, because it's morning, right? Good morning. Kevin, right? Not Kelvin, Kevin, apparently. Good morning, Kevin. Um, what you'd have to do is you specify system call code number eight. How do you do that? You load the value eight into the register V0, right? Um, before that, though, I mean, uh, at the top in the data section, you specify, um, you pre allocate memory, right? Um, uh, you pre-allocate predefined uh, bytes in memory, right? Uh, normally, the, the bytes must correspond to maximum, maximum possible size of the data that's going to sit in memory. So if it's a name, for instance, we know that a character is one byte long, for instance, you think, what's, a what, what's the longest name we can possibly find in class, right? I don't know, there are people with maybe five names, I don't know. But let's say 50, perhaps 50 characters, right? So you say you're going to allocate 50 bytes in memory, right? Um, and then somewhere there, once you start listing input from the user, you say load the value 8 into v0. Um, and then you, you will say load the address associated with uh, location in memory that you've reserved, the 50 bytes. Um, and then you specify the maximum number of characters. Typically, uh, you should be fine if you just specify the number of characters that corresponds to the allocation that you have up there. But it can't be any more than what you've specified in memory. Yes? Not exactly, this is what I was saying. It, it must be less or equal to. It can never be more. Because you, so what he's asking is, you look at, we'll look at the example here. So what he's asking is, is arguments that we're specifying, A0 and A1. What, I, what I'm saying is the A0, no, it's not A0. What he's referring to is uh, the location of memory in the data section and these number of characters. His question is, um, should these be the same? I'm saying, I said it's less or equal to, but not more than this. Hmm? 
Okay, we'll look at an example just now. Yeah. Maybe I'm being too abstract here. Uh, uh, can you hold, hold your horses for the question? It, it, it can come back after we look at an example. So finally, uh, like uh, exit, this we've seen it over and over again. Interesting thing about exit in comparison to these others is uh, you, you, don't have, you don't have any intermediate steps. Uh, so all you do is you say uh, load the value 10 into register v0 and then you issue this call. Similar to uh, reading an integer. We said you just load the value five into V0 and then you see Cisco. Uh, the thing will start blinking. Okay, so, so a few examples here, Cisco, we've seen this, right? Line number eight and nine. Load the value 10 into V0. Again, I'm using a pseudo instruction LI here, load immediate. But what you could do, right, for you to, to be able to gracefully exit the program, is, and I know you know this already, you're smart, uh, smart guys, smart cookies. What you can do is, you can just say, uh, let's say you have a, a, a program that just uh, does a very basic thing here, and It does very basic things, like uh, we are adding the value uh, five into register eight, for instance. Um, simple program. Running out of names, it's a lot easier to name them with your names, right? So what I'm saying is, normally this is what we've, we've been doing, right? We're not gracefully exiting, but observe what happens if I load this program called Kapemba and execute it. This is what I'm saying. You, you've been running into this error here. The reason is we are not gracefully exiting, right? You gracefully exit by using system call code number 10, 10 to exit the program. How do you do that? Well, all you have to do is load the value 10, which is a system call code, right? How you load it is up to you, you can lo use load immediate, we we'll use, uh, we we'll just load it into V0 and we'll say, okay, fine, we'll load, uh, we'll load 10 using add i. We can do this. The key thing is once you load the value into V0, you issue the instruction Cisco, which is in line number 10. And you notice now if I execute this, that error doesn't come up and I see my, my, my result five is in eight because we are gracefully exiting the program, system call code 10. <coughs> is this fine? And the thing is just uh, the rules, right? Rules are nice. The rules say um, for you to, to actually gracefully exit the program, you must first of all load the system call code that is associated with exiting the program, which is 10, into the register B0. And then you issue the operation or the instruction syscall for system call. Not system call, syscall. People always make these mistakes. Not global with an A, global without an A. It's a very important thing. If you use an A, you run into problems. Oh, I have a problem. Why is this not running? Oh, well, I mean, it's global without an A, right? Um, and then another example here, just uh, printing an integer value. This is what I was saying. I guess we can kind of um, uh, carry on with our simple example that we have here. We're saying if you want to print an integer, Key thing here is for you to print an integer, you look at the system call code for printing an integer, right? These things are available in manuals. Don't memorize this, don't waste your time and memorize this unless you have nothing better to do in life. Don't do this, if a question comes in the exam, you'll be given a table like this, perhaps even better. All you have to do is know how to use these things, how to print an integer. So I know, we know that uh, Printing an integer involves using system call code number one. The process is the same. You initially, let's say we want to print, because right now when we run this program, right? This Capemba program. We run it, all it does is it just loads the value five into register eight. But what if we want to print that? We want to see it on the console. It's not there, right? Console there, it's not there. We want to see it on the console. What do we do? We say we go through a systematic process of after we, we, we know that is, this value is in, is in register eight, we want to print what's in register eight, 
process for printing an integer. Load system call code number one into V0. How you load that is up to you. Maybe we should use things that people are interested, uh, familiar with. So we are loading the value one into register V0. To say we want to print an integer. The other thing you have to do is specify the value that you wish to print by putting it in A0. Yes? This is a step here. So the value that you wish to print must be in, in the register A0. Here's a question. How are we going, how are we going to put the value that is in 8 into A0? Yes, Ms. Mlenga. Putting on uh, Adidas, right? What do we, what do, how do we put the value of in, uh, that is in register 8 into A0? Yes. Yeah. You know the answers, right? But yeah, <laughs> wanted someone who doesn't know the answers. Thank you very much. Yeah. You can move the move, move instruction, right? It's a bit, listen. You don't have to use the move instruction. If if here's a question for you. If I wanted to put what is in eight in register nine, how would I do that? If I wanted to put the I know the value five is in eight. How do I put register the value that is in register eight into register nine? How would I do that? Hmm. Yeah, so move using add instruction. There's a number of different ways, right? We can use add instruction. Right? What he's suggesting is a pseudo instruction. What he's suggesting is something that is intuitive to most of us because we've been using the add instruction. How do you do that? We want to put what is in A0. And how do you do that? We put what is in 8 into A0, we just add a zero to what is in eight and put it in A0, boom, right? Line number nine, done. Now once you put, once you put the value that you wish to print into A0, which you've done in line number nine, you then issue Cisco. <clears throat> Always when you're making use of um, a service, an operating system service or a system call, you must issue Cisco to signal the fact that you want to uh, call a particular service, a desired service, so Cisco, and then once you save this uh, program, you go back to Qt Spim, you initialize and load or something, um, and then you run it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. The five now comes to the console, printing, it's a simple thing, printing a string. But the steps, right, that's key thing here is just the steps that you go through when you're printing an integer. You first of all specify system call code one to signal the fact that you're interested in printing an integer, and then you move the value that you wish to print into the register A0, and then you issue Cisco, and then your, your integer will be printed out. Yes, sir? We don't know, it will. What he's saying is if we, if we don't gracefully exit the program, comment, save, Initialize, load, don't know, run, oh, error, but still comes. It still prints, but that error still comes up. It's irritating, I guess. And uh, why, why is it that the error still comes when it still prints and it still loads the value? Because the, the error pops up because your program is going in a loop. So it will work, but it's, it's trying to restart from where it started from. Which is why the error comes up. But, yes? Sorry? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you very much. This is an example of a runtime error. We had a discussion the other day, day before yesterday, when people said, <laughs> I'm sorry, I saw him. He said, he thought I was going to say there's no class. No. In fact, there was a memo that was sent through by the registrar saying, there's this uh, purported cancellation of classes by Nzasu. There's no such thing, they told us. There's no such thing, right? Here's the thing. If you meet someone on the streets and tell, tells you go to East Park, you meet someone and they tell you to say, uh, they've said you shouldn't go to Unza. Are you going to believe them? The authority is important. Who dictates whether or not there are no classes? The people there in Central Admin, right? Not Unzasu. But uh, so, 
um, it works just fine. Hey, I'm just saying, you better learn these things at first year anyway, but it's too late now. Um, we'll give this lecture to the guys that are coming through next year. We are waiting for them. They should come quickly, right? So hopefully we understand this. <laughs> Register number one. Yeah, we, we are building, this is important things we are doing here, right? Which is why we're excited. We are training people that are going to do, you know, big and better things for Zambia, right? Uh, we don't know if that's going to happen, but we hope it will, which is why we're excited. So, so this is the thing, and you notice here, the things that we've been doing, the com complex expressions we've been working towards those additions and multiplications and divisions, instead of putting the final result in a register, you can just print it out, right? Okay, so we said system call code five allows for, uh, for you to elicit input from a user. Very simple, similar to system call code 10 here, you notice. All you do is you specify to say you want to um, make use of uh, the service that allows you to elicit input, allow a user to enter an integer. How do you do that? You put the system call code five into V0 and then just issue Cisco. It's probably easier, same as 10. Question you should be asking yourself is, as we are talking about all these different things here, when you're given a table like this, you must be able to interpret the information here. Because these are things you're finding online in this reference documentation that we're pointing you towards. These are the things that we're going to find in the exam, in the test, in the quizzes, the telecom quizzes, right? So you should be able to not say, oh, if I'm printing an integer, uh, if I'm printing an integer, I have to specify um, argument, right? In S0, the thing that I'm going to print. If I'm printing a string, I need to specify the address. If I'm reading an integer, I know that when the user enters the integer, the value is going to be in V0, right? You see this? This, this must sink in here. This is what you need to understand, not, oh, how am I going to do that, right? Okay, so system, uh, system call code five here, pretty much similar to uh, system call code 10. What you do is you load the value five into V0, and then you issue Cisco. Now, for those of us that are asking, but what if I don't want to use V0? Don't use it, you can use, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use two. Hmm? So instead of saying, instead here, what I'm saying is instead of you saying load immediate dollar sign V0, you can just say load immediate dollar sign two, if you want to. Just like you can say, uh, I want to load immediate dollar sign eight instead of load immediate dollar sign T naught. Right? Uh, uh, because I'm slow myself, I prefer the things that can easily stick in there. So I use, I don't use numbers a lot, right? I stay away from numbers. Like V0 is stuck in here, it's pretty easy to, to stick in here than two. For me, uh, you, I don't know, if, you, if you're better with numbers, right? Like, I guess it's like, uh, for me, right? I don't know the IP address for the UNSA website, but I know that the UNSA website is www.unsa.zm. For me. For some people I know, maybe most of you millennials, because of the nature, I guess, maybe you, you work better with numbers. Take your pick. Everything, whatever works for you is okay. There are options. That's what I'm trying to say here. Right? I'm not saying this is the way to do it. There are other ways of doing this, specifying the register in this case. Right. Um, I mean, so if, if, you, if, if you wanted an example, for instance, uh, uh, we could build on what we already have. We could say, instead of us loading this value directly into register eight like we did, right, we are hard coding it, right? What if we wanted to load it interactively? We first of all would say, ask or prompt user for input. How do you prompt a user for input? Load immediate. Uh, V0, uh, 5, Cisco. But the thing here, right, is because V0, um, because the, the, the value that the user is going to enter is going to be in V0, you need a way of moving what is in V0 into a desired register. Like in this case, we're saying instead of us having line number 11, hard coding 5, we just want to put what the user will enter into V0. So what do we do? We can just say, uh, okay, we just add uh, 
uh, into eight, into register eight, sorry, what is in V0, right? Yeah? And this will work. So I guess I'll delete this in case it's confusing people. So this program now, I'll small you to program, if we load this capital.sm and run it, it will, you see the blinking thing cursor, it's, as, it's waiting for input, I'll type in, we're graduating in 2022, right? 2022 and then enter, right? Um, you will notice that our register A will have 2022, yeah? Can you see that? 2022 is 7E6, is it? Right, so I've, I've done something slightly different here to a very primitive program, and uh, by the way, it's printing that because we are also printing what's in eight, register eight, right? So with, with this now, I mean, I don't have to hard code my program. Somebody else, the students next year, when they come through, they'll be saying we'll graduate in 2023, right? So, but the key thing here really, guys, is um, how you get to do this, right? And you, you prompt for integer input by specifying system call code five, putting it in this one, and then issue syscall. Um, and then the rest is just logic, how you go about using the value that you've gotten from a user. Uh, and really there's, there's a whole range, a broad range of things that you can do with the value. Maybe you're, you're adding it to some expression, some mathematical expression, you're subtracting it from something, you're computing your age, you're computing when you're going to graduate using the current year, all those fancy things. You just get input. Okay, so what about printing strings? We have been uh, printing strings here. What we do is um, we go through a systematic process of specifying um, system call code number four, right? So again, we load four into V0, and then we specify the address in memory where the string we wish to print is located. Address, right? Address in memory. Um, and obviously, so if it's in memory, you'd probably have defined it somewhere in the data section, right? So like in this case, in line number three, we have a, a string called assembly programming in ICT 1110 exclamation mark uh, as, as a string in memory, right? And the way that we know where in memory it's sitting is this variable here called var and about string and about input user defined, you define this. Could have been X, Y, Z if you wanted, okay, right? And the importance of defining this here is you use the variable to specify the address in memory of the thing you wish to print. So what we're doing here is we're saying issue, we, we want to print this string. What we do is we say load immediate dollar sign V0, four, and then load address of the piece of string here, right? And the address of the piece of string must be loaded into the register A0. It must be loaded, the address of the string you wish to print must be loaded in A0. Always. Just like, just like the thing that you want to print must be loaded, the integer you wish to print must be loaded in A0. Do you now understand why we were saying when you're doing, when you're writing your programs, stick to the safe register range, the temporal range? Because if, if you were one of those characters who decided, oh no, I'm going to use, I don't care what Lighton says or what the book says, I will use T, I will use T2, I'll use V0 and A0. You could, it will work. But because it's used for special things, right? You end up messing up your program, you run into errors. Anyway, uh, so you specify the address like so, so we are saying load address of this string into A0, this is how we're doing it, and then issue syscall. And once you issue syscall, it will print the string for you, right? Which is kind of straightforward here. Is this making sense? Now printing the, the string here is pretty, what, what we're saying here is if we wanted to print a string ICT 1110, what we do is we say the variable, right? You can name this anything, right? Emmanuel. Data type, because this is a string ASCII. Z. Um, then in 2022 or something, before goes well. So, um, 
<laughs> That's a bad thing, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to jinx you. So, so we are saying for us to print the string, the string graduating in 2022, right? We go through a systematic process of, what do we do? Specify the system call code. Load immediate or add i into v0, you're going to, uh, you're going to put the value what? Four. After you do that, you want to load address into S0, which address? The address that is represented by this variable here, var manual. And then you issue Cisco. Once you do that and you load your program, you should be able to print that string. Right, graduating in 2022 with an exclamation mark. Yes. Because it's an interactive program, um, it, it, the first thing it did was it printed the string. Have you seen the cursor, Ms. Mlenga? It's blinking, expecting input. Eight. Are you happy now? So it was there because it's, um, so when you, ex when you execute this piece of program, right, because it's interactive, it only gets to do these other things once you provide it with what it's expecting. Like in this case, input. Yes, sir? I, I thought it went because you added those hashtags. Because I, we added what? You added those hashtags in Google Docs. No, but the, the commenting was only done, uh, the commenting is just here and here. This, this other thing is uncommented. What she was asking is, we, it, 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 it looked like we just printed the string here, say graduating in 2022, but what about these other things here? And I was telling her to say, when you run this program, like I did, um, when you run this, you see the cursor at the end here, it's expecting input. So when I type in nine, it will print the nine there. Yeah, so, okay. Hopefully this makes sense. Now you notice that using system calls is pretty uh, trivial, really, because the information is available to you. It's like you're given this, the, uh, this is a question, the answers can be found at the, by some open book exams, kind of, right? Um, I, 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 again, I went through this, this program, this simple program the other time in class. I don't know if we should go through this again. Oh. Okay. I, I thought we would go through the age one, maybe. No? Or we go through the age one, there's this, this is all interaction, probably simpler than, than then there's this. Just to put, to put the different pieces together. You notice that uh, uh, if you want to write a program that prompts the user to enter two integers and then print the sum, there are a couple of things that we are doing here. We need to prompt for two numbers that the user is going to enter, the numbers that you want to add. We need to print the answer. We, we probably just don't want to print the answer, we want to pr print some informative text as part of the answer to say the answer is, the answer of maybe two plus three is five. You know, understand what I mean? So you notice that you know those different scenarios, system call code, um, one for printing the integers, uh, system call code, uh, five for reading the two input values, the operands. Uh, system call code four for maybe printing some piece of text that may be descriptive. Do you understand this? No. Sorry? No. Uh, what? No. Oh yeah, so sure. Uh, there's no eight here. So oh oh, it's eight here. Um, what are we talking about? Eight or four? Okay. So eight eight enables you to get uh, string input, right? So the in instances when, when you, you're interested in getting a string input value from a user, a piece of text, and not an integer, a double, a float, for whatever reason, right? Like I gave an example of good morning and then name or something, right? Um, so you go through a systematic process of 
specifying or pre-allocate, this is wrong by the way, I'm sorry. But you, you specify, I should have uploaded this, uh, I should have changed this. Instead of being abstract, let's just, uh, let's just do this. So program to accept string input. We'll do the good morning, right? Because it's still morning. It's dozing, so it's still morning. So we say the first thing we need to do is we, we start off our program the way we normally do, right? Make sure you just write the, the bits that, that are, uh, are pretty easy to get out of the way. But we first of all need to preallocate, we we'll preallocate memory, right? We, we, we preallocate space in memory that's going to be used to hold the value that's going to be entered. And we do that the same way that we, we define variables. So you define a variable, like in this case, I'll just say input string, right? Input string. Uh, uh, the thing here is the variable that you use by defining is called space, right? And then the next thing that you specify after space is the size in memory that you want to pre-allocate to this. So let's say 50 bytes, for instance, because I'm thinking of characters here, yeah, 50 characters is the maximum number of some Zambian names, maybe 100 characters, right? 100 bytes or something. What I do is I go through a process of specifying the system call code that I wish to, uh, to use for me to read a string. What is the system call code for reading a string? Don't know. Okay. Five, so I'll say add i into v0. Someone said five, I don't know if they're trying to joke here or something, but you're not following, are you? Uh, if you want to read an integer, I mean a string, system call code, eight. Okay, so, so you load the value eight into v0, like I did, um, and then you you say uh, uh, load the address. Is it load the address uh, in a zero of var input? So you 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 specify the 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 address of the string that's or the location in memory that's going to hold the value that the user is going to enter. And then you specify the maximum number of characters in A1, right? Again, uh, I know about uh, what I am using here because of, of this, these details here, right? A1, number of characters, A0 is the string, placeholder, right? Um, and then I'll issue the syscall. And then uh, as good measure, again, good habit here, we we'll just say V0 load 10 and then syscall so that we gracefully exit. But to, to, to see if, if uh, well, we'll run this to see if it's going to work, obviously. To prove that that value has actually been loaded into memory, you notice that you probably need to, uh, you probably need to, um, you will probably need to print out the string, right? So once you enter it, like I have entered it. So we've, we've written a simple program that accepts input, right? But the question is, how do we check that the input has actually been uh, how do we check that that string has actually been captured? Easy way to do it is to print it out, right? So you, you make use of system call code four to print it out, print the string that you've entered. So we'll just say we're gonna print the name, but uh, we'll, we'll do something pretty uh, interesting also. We will print good morning and then the value, right? So we'll say good morning because it is a good morning, there are no, uh, protest today. Good morning and then the value. So after we get the input, we'll say add i into v0. Uh, we're going to put the value 4 because we want to print the string. And then we'll load the address or into a0 of the thing that we wish to print, which is uh, input 2. And then we should see score. And then yes. 
Right. Well, it can be uh, ask or ask is it, doesn't matter. One is, one is now terminated, one isn't. Ask will work as well, it's also a data type. Uh, to, see, to see that it works, we'll leave it like this and then we'll fix it. Um, and then add i uh, v0. You notice that here's the thing, if I leave it here, right, and run this program, it will just print good morning. Once I enter Andrew or something. Right, good morning, but we also want to print your name once you enter good morning, your name or something, something like that, right? <clears throat> uh, so after we print good morning, we want to print this value that the user has entered, which is how it is represented in memory by this variable, yeah? How do we print that? System call called for again, right, v0. Uh, load the address in A0 of the string, and then syscall, right? Boom, done. Um, so once we do this, we load our program and execute this, and it should be able to work here. Is this fine now? So you, you notice that this example, is, we've done a, a few things here, right? We just, we are eliciting input from the user using system call code eight because we are reading a piece of text. We are printing two pieces of text, which is why we are using system call code number four, right? Two of them twice. We print the predefined, the hard coded good morning, and then dynamically print whatever value the user enters, the name in this case. Do you understand this? No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's how you wish to do it. It's, for me, right, when, when I'm writing, and I encourage you to do this, when you're writing code, right, you want to make sure that it's properly indented. It's easy to read. Uh, what I could have done is I could have said, uh, oh, I'll just uh, put a space afterwards here, like, so it'll work. But look at this thing, right? It, it looks horrible. Look at this. It's bad. You know, it works just fine. It's just that I like aligning, aligning things in a certain way. Like uh, if you wanted to, you could have said, uh, fine, you do this. But, uh, this will work just fine. I'll run this. What the hell did I just do? There's something wrong here. Dot. Thank you. Hey, listen. You will soon go through the pain of uh, when you're running this next year. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you spend, I remember when I was doing this for the first time, first couple of years, right? 2008, it was very hard for me. You know, where you leave out a semicolon, right? Spending hours in the lab. What is wrong with this thing? What is wrong with this? And you know how life works, right? There are certain things that you can't easily identify, especially if you're the person writing this, but if you give it somebody else, they'll know. I would spend hours and hours. So if you hadn't told me what was wrong here, I was probably gonna find it really hard to figure out what it was. Uh, unless if, I always try to, I rewrite everything at once. But this works just fine, right? So what's the use of this uh, small box below? Which box? This is for the logs. If there's an error, the error comes here. We so said this. What can they check from there? The logs, like, uh, like uh, if I, if I, um, if you try to track down what's wrong with your code, if I say one, two, three, hopefully this works. I, I, I don't know if it's mostly runtime errors, but let's, uh, let's try and see. Observe now, right? If I run this, you see, we see what just came up. The error that I had here, is logged. Um, I mean, if you're writing a complex thing, you might want to refer to this after you execute your program so that you see exactly what happened, right? In an ideal case, it's supposed to be like a timestamp of when this error kind of 
happened or something, but it's because this is a simple simulator, it doesn't do that. Is this fine? Do you see the, 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 the way that we use system calls? Um, and with, with that now we can, we can actually do, we can do this without a problem. Yes? Yes, Dr. Uh, just the previous program, we expected, is it 100? Bytes. bytes. Now what happens is now where maybe the characters exceed 100 bytes? Well, you'd have to know beforehand how much memory you need, which is why it's, it's, you have to make that decision. I mean, you probably run into errors. So here's the one way of doing this. Let's, um, let's see what's going to happen if we say we allocate two bytes, but we'll write uh, your name, which is more than two bytes, right? Uh, and then here, we'll just say two bytes as well. <clears throat> I don't know what will happen, but let's see. We run this, okay. You see that? Already when I'm when I exceed when I exceed the two bytes, two characters, an error pops up. So it's a, I mean these are one of some of the things that decisions that you have to make. Although I mean you rarely write programs at this level, right? So um, most of this stuff is done for you in the background by um, probably by the high level programming language that you're using. The, the, the only language that I, uh, the language that I know that I'm somewhat familiar with that allows you to pre-allocate memory is things like C++ and C. But these other programs, you just write code, right? And you just hope that the, 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 the compiler or the interpreter will be able to do the right things for you as you're executing or compiling a program, right? So this is what happens. Can't go beyond that. Guys, is this fine? Now here's, here's one way of asking ourselves, right? If we wish to, not the printing integers, but if we wanted to write this, this thing here, <clears throat> what series of steps would we have to go through? Write an assembly language program that prompts a user to enter their date of birth, 2003, and then prompt the current year, 2009. The program should calculate the age of the user, and uh, so you prompt the user, and then you tell your year is, I mean your age is blah, blah, blah. How would we do this? It's a simple thing here, right? You must identify, you must be able to realize or recognize the fact that you need to prompt the user for two things, date of birth and the current year, right? <clears throat> what that means is that <clears throat> because you're prompting for two things, you must identify what sort of data type you're prompting the user, 2003, 2019, 2020, integer values. If you're working with integer values, you know that you're going to be working with system core, code, fa, five, right, five. <clears throat> and then the other thing you do is, you're, <clears throat> when you're prompting, you're writing this text, enter your date of birth so that you, you provide some descriptive information to the user, meaning that you have to use system core code four, right? <clears throat> Don't have to memorize it, but system core code four. Because you're going to write your age, you are, Age, years, years old. You know that? System core code? Five. But because you're going to print the age, you're printing an integer. System core code? One. one. So you're, you're actually making use of system core code one, five, and four here. And you just stitch up your program. In between though, there's a the logic part, right? When you get the value, to, when you use enters 2003 and 2019, you must perform some basic arithmetic operation. How do you compute the age? You look at the current year, you subtract the date of birth, the year, 2019 minus 20, uh, 2003. So you must use the operation sub to subtract the two values. Is, is this fine? Now, yes. Yes. You you put the value depending on which which system call you are using. So if you're printing an integer, the value that you print must be placed in a zero. <coughs> when you're printing an integer, the value must be in a zero. <coughs> do you want us to do that? Yes. Yay! Now the 
what was I, I was about to say something. If you notice, the reason why I'm explaining to you, the, I'm walking you through what you would do is no one would help you. If a question was to come, right? A question is not going to come, add five plus five. I mean, if a question like this comes, you have to think about the logic, right? Or if you're practicing in, in, in the labs with non uh, soon. You have to think about the logic, which is why I was helping you with the logic. Say, if you asked like this, you have to think, how do I calculate the age? What sort of steps do I have to follow? And it's usually advisable, I highly encourage you to do this, to write pseudo code, right? Line by line to actually kind of help you, gu guide yourself. Um, I'm running out of example, examples here, but I will, I, I mean, found names, I just say, Yes. Right, so program, program to compute date of birth, right? So we write the usual, we start with the, um, the usual stuff that our program is supposed to have. Um, uh, and I'll say prompt, as a first step, prompt user for date of birth. Prompt user for current year. Compute age. Print age. And you're done. I mean, I guess like exit or something. Where is he going? Exit. <clears throat> and then uh, once you write these things, these are going to guide you what, uh, with what you need to go through, right? You know that uh, with this, all you have to do is start slotting things in here, right? I'll start with the easiest, which is how do I exit? I'll load uh, system core code number 10 here, and then just issue this core, good measure. Prompt user for date of birth, right? So how do I prompt the user for date of birth? I'll load in V0. Right? But we also said, our prompt should be in such a way that enter current year, enter date of birth, right? So I'll create input one, or I'll say input uh, birth, birth or something. <clears throat> and then I'll say enter. Yeah. And then I'll have another input where I'll say current. And then I'll say enter current year, right? And again, as, 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 like as you're, if you're writing something that involves a lot of instructions, I highly encourage you guys to, oh, they're here. I highly encourage you, it's fine, just a little more, while longer. I highly encourage you guys to, to, to try out this these programs, right? Uh, so load v0, let's quickly do this. Cisco, a load address uh, in a0, this is a var input birth or something, <clears throat> right? Uh, you want to try these things out, right? As you are writing the code, write a small chunk of it, run it and see if it works, enter year, is it 2013 or something, it works. And then go to the next stage where you say, you're gonna do the same thing, prompt the year. How do you do this? Load in V0, uh, four, and then load address a zero, var input current year, and then I'll issue this call. Um, I know this is gonna work, uh, but also I, I, I prompt, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I prompt the user to enter the value that I'm interested in, which is five, Cisco. Uh, but you notice that as I'm entering fives in Cisco, I need to move these values into appropriate registers because they're going to be overwritten otherwise. So I'll put in T0, I'll put what's in V0, move that here, and then um, in here, I will move the value. I will move the value in T1 from, why are you in V0, right? <laughs> Right? Uh, if you want, you can, again, just to make sure that uh, the program at least is, is fine. Already there's a problem there, right? This is called 
as an issue. And it tells you the line number, so I know it's here. I'll run it again. I know once I enter 2013, current year is 2019. Okay, uh, I'm getting these values, they are fine. And when I get these values, you notice that they're being put into registers I wish them to be put in, right? T0 and T1. Uh, if I go back here, I will say now compute the age. Age is easy, subtract, I'll put the value in T2, right? What am I subtracting? I'm subtracting what's in T1, yeah? From what is in T, T0, right? And then I'll print the age. How do I print the age? I will, I will say uh, system core code V0, one, right, Cisco, but I will need to move what is in, uh, in T2 to A0, right? Hmm? Yeah, uh, so if I, if I load this, you notice that yes, it's gonna run, date of birth, 2003, 2019, and then it prints 16 years old. I, well, 16, I don't know if this is correct, but you could prove that. But here's the thing, we said it should be that your age is, right? You notice that what you have to do is again define some string up here, you say the uh, uh, string one, And then I'll just say uh, your age, you are, you are, right? Because we're supposed to print, this is the thing, right? You were supposed to print you are age years old. So what, that, what this means is you're supposed to define two strings here. After the age, you have the, the stuff that just says, uh, yeah? So I'll go back here and process strings one and two. Before I print, I print the string here, the age. I will say, load immediate, in, uh, I want to print that string one. I'll say load address into A0. I'll say var string one. Do you understand this? So that, and then I'll have to print the other string. Observe what happens here. What I wish to print is uh, uh, garbage. Uh, we did something wrong here. We're supposed to have prompted uh, for input before we did. We did something wrong. What did we do wrong? We printed the string before. We printed the. Or we can put it there, actually. Backslash n just goes to the new line. It works just fine. There's something we've not done right here. I will. Uh, what, what have we not done right? The movement of the registers, maybe. There's something we're not doing right here. What is it? You, see, you understand what I mean? If I load this program, yes, enter. It's not supposed to print you are years old. There's something we've done wrong. We probably not issued the proper system call somewhere. Sorry, subtract, why? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. There's, there's something we're not, we're not doing right here. The strings. The, ah, oh, the current year. It says add current year. Guys, he's saying he should fail or something. Uh, Cisco. The, the, the problem is we, the problem started when we, we, we decided to write these years or something. For, okay, we prompt the user, we enter the value and move it to T naught. Um, we prompt the user for four and then move it to two, T naught. There's something we're not doing right here. And I'm wondering what it is. Sir, yes. What, what if we just add the, the value there after you are? Control press is there. The value after you are? Yes, after you are, the one in how, how are you going to add it there? No, 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 no. it doesn't, how? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't work like that. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we've done. We've done something iffy here, and I don't, I don't know what it is. I think it's a string input somewhere. 
No, it's not, it's not the password. What password are you talking about? Don't go anywhere. This has to be done here. So, no, that's not true. There is a, they can come in. There's a, let's, this, this must be done here. Let's just try this. Debugging is always a problem. Your year of birth, your current year. Debugging is always a problem. Yes, sir. Backslash n is there to uh, to tell this thing to. Actually, the reason why this might be happening is because these are not now terminated. Doesn't know where this thing stops. There's a class. Yeah, we are almost done. Okay, we are almost done. Just we just want to finish it. So the reason is uh, this is now terminated. I don't know if you've noticed this. Right. So because it's now terminated, uh, because it's now terminated now, I'll go back to what we had before. The code was just fine. Here, string one, I'll now, now terminate it so that it knows where the string ends, right? Observe. Now that when we run this date of birth, 2003, 2019, you are 16. Now, because, because we need to add the other part, which is years old, we must print the string again, this years old string. So we'll go towards the end, after printing the integer, we'll say v0, uh, v0, uh, v0, and then uh, for Cisco, but in this case, we need to load the register into a0, which register the string, the second string. And then boom, so this, this thing now will work because um, we've done the right thing. It's called yesterday SM. So date of birth, 2000. Current year, when, when are you going to graduate? 2022. You will be 22 years old if you are born in 2000. And you understand what I mean? Simple thing, but the takeaway point here is that um, you want to understand exactly how to go about using the different system calls. This is what we're trying to, to showcase here. Right. If you wish to access this program, I shall save this on the uh, on the edit pad, the collaborative editor, so you can access it at your own time. Guys, I shall see you when you see me, which is uh, Monday promptly. We are meeting in Unzasek two. Uh, uh, sorry, are you happy? Was this fine today? Yes. Okay. I, I enjoyed the program. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, sorry. Did the program? No, I'm going to put it here. Yeah, I'd like to have it. Okay, you will find it here. You see that? Where? You will find it where? <laughs> On Moodle, you go down, you will find the links to uh, the editor, which is this. You will find the code here. I'll, I'll add it. I'll add it as uh, September, under September 6, 2019. You'll find it there. Yeah? Yeah? You just have to go here. Morning, Miss Mulinga. Hi. Ah, oh, go to my YouTube channel. We recorded the screencasts. You will find them there. I think, I don't know. Which lessons do you miss? <coughs> what happened? Are you okay? Oh, sorry for the loss. Who died? Sorry? I'm sorry for the loss. Uh, um, what I would encourage you to do is go and watch the, the recorded lectures. And then if you have specific questions, once you, because it would be like a lecture, right? Which is nice, like we're doing right now. Go to my YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Um, and then when you have a problem, come and see me and then I'll help explain a few things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or read the, the notes. Yeah, just search. I'm the, probably the only light on YouTube. I don't know, light on period. Or, but, okay, thank yeah. you. Sir. Yeah. Go here, let me show you. Mash, people don't, I, I know people don't go here because only a few people go here. So when you go to, I guess we'll open an incognito window or something. Um, when you go to YouTube, you will find, although this is also on the, um, 
it's also in the syllabus, right? The link to the playlist. What you want to do is just uh, so you go here, yeah, and then what you want to do is you want to go to a specific playlist if you can access the playlist somewhere. I don't know if you can access the playlist, but there's a playlist, there should be a playlist under ICT. And you notice that we have a whole bunch of lectures here, right? You see in here, the screencast is what you want to see. And they're ordered in, in order here, so you'll see, um, you'll see everything you need here. Uh, I should remove this, so. Uh, explains why I haven't been seeing you. And then I also upload the others that haven't yet been uploaded. And then you can also read the notes and the specific question. Did you miss any assessments? No. Ah, you have my shoes like mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> yeah. You've been the office? Uh, yes, from 9 to, to 13. Please come and see us. I'm yeah. Oh, you should. Okay, great. Sorry again. Yes. Yes, uh, why is it that uh, some of the, I don't know if